Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. Today I'm joined by Nerdarchist Ryan. And it's that time again on Earth Arcana. This time we're getting into The Wizards Revisited. Hey, jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So Watts has dropped another uh, another Arnarthur Canna upon us. It just doesn't stop. And uh, <laughs> given their name, Wizards of the Coast, lo and behold, it's another wizard. Well, it, it's we, another two <laughs> wizards, and we've seen one of them. We, we've seen one of them before, and we've literally seen, we've seen half of the other one before, in a way. Sort of. You know, the the Thergy one is literally ripped out of one from months ago. Now they had done this one previously, but it was before they actually started doing. Uh, the, the the survey feedback situation. So they're like, well, we want to know what you guys think about it, so we'll just kind of sneak this one in here with the War Mage. And, bonus, it'll pad it out to be more than a page, and therefore we don't, you know, don't have to worry about how little content it's actually providing, even though it's free. Yeah, I mean, it's worth the cost of admittance, that being said. <laughs> the, the free. Yes. Yeah. So, so let, you know, let's get into, into Thurgy again. Uh, what did you think about it? The re -thurgy. I mean, so it's 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 essentially like the other. It is the other thirgy. thirgy. Um, it's interesting to be able to get an additional. Um, so they they have div divine or not divine. I'm thinking about arcane initiative initiate. So when you gain spell spells based on the wizard spell level, they get to choose one of those spells to be from uh, their cleric domain that they get right. access to. Uh, so, so one of the two spells they get for wizard level, they can choose to, to level that up. And then if they exhaust all their domain spells, they actually can choose any cleric spell once that happens. So that that is incredibly interesting there. And for a lot of things, I, I don't have a problem with it. I do feel that I have a problem with Wizards running around with cure wounds, it it breaks the D and D mechanic in my brain. Now, that's not my biggest problem with this particular uh, archetype, but you know we'll we'll get into that. Is, is there? I, I and I forget this one uh, as far as the wizard go. Isn't there a thing where they can essentially cast like a first level spell like at will? Like they can just cast it whenever and it doesn't exhaust spells. Yeah, when they when they get to the higher higher levels, they they have a first level spell they can cast. Yeah, so. Cure Light Wounds becomes a real problem when you... I mean, I would almost say, a, as a dungeon master, like, yeah, the only thing is, like, this is this one spell that, like, you can do anything else but this. Because <laughs> yeah, Cure a... Wounds is essentially, like, no, because you're just spamming Cure Wounds all uh -huh. the time. So that's a problem. And there's, you know, whatever. But, so, that 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 can create a problem for high-level campaigns when it's like, all right, well, I never run out of healing spells. It's like, okay, well, yeah, you could be casting Magic Missile nonstop, or you could be casting Cure Wounds nonstop. Clerics can't even come close to that. So, uh, second level, they have the ability to do their Channel Arcana, which would be essentially the Channel Divinity. So not only do you get the Clerics Channel Divinity powers, but then you also have the ability to choose your own type of Divine Arcana, which you use it as a bonus action. The next spell you cast, you either get a plus two to hit or a plus two to, to the spell's DC save for the saving throw. Not a bad ability. It's definitely limited. You can only do it, you know, once. Once per, once per combat, essentially. One, well, once per short rest. Uh, then you gain higher uh, uses uh, at 6th and 18th level. So, it, it's nice. Now, I mean, like, it is, like, raising a difficulty class by two is pretty, like, that... That's potent. That that's that's high because there's not many things in the game that are gonna raise a DC like there's the warlock wand like uh, mm -hmm. the wand, rather the pack keeper. Pack keeper that does that but the warlock gets so few spells that that doesn't really matter. There's also robe of the arch magi. Right. Yeah. And but I mean it's the friggin' robe of the arch magi. <laughs> so but a class ability that gives a plus two like. I don't know, maybe that should just be a plus one, or maybe they are essentially only using that once per fight, so maybe it's okay. I, I think it's limiting enough, because like, as an 18th level caster, you're going to do it three times per short rest. That that might be excessive, but like, really, you know, how often are you getting a short rest when you're at that kind of level? Depends so, on the dungeon master. It really does. Um, so now now we start getting into the, you know, let, let's play the trading game. Um you know, at sixth level, you get your first level cleric ability. All right, that's a 
big level level gap it might be interesting oh and by the way you don't get weapons you don't get armor proficiencies but okay well what happens if i decided all right well i'm playing the knowledge domain as my as my wizard well all right at sixth level i've just picked up two proficiencies and expertise in them if i've gone you know gone that way if i've gone with war i'm not really getting all that much so it really is going to depend upon what you're picking because there is that limiting factor of no weapons and armor right yeah um so not so bad like it's really a way to the, the third is interesting in that it's a way to still monoclass as a wizard but get some some daps of uh, of cleric on you right. so in that extent it's pretty cool and the, and then here here's where we really you know begin to see the the slide in in power because you know again at 10th level you get the sixth level cleric ability so again, you know, four levels different, waiting on, you know, clerics getting in first. But then at 14th level, you get the cleric 17th level ability. And it's like, oh, your, your, you know, your studiousness to magic actually somehow trumps the, the cleric and you now get it before him. I, I think there's, there is no way, shape or form that a wizard who is studying magic, even if he's devout and has knowledge of religion and prays every day is going to be more of a servant to a deity or source over the cleric. Now, that's the narrative logic of the world, right? But really that happens because the way that the wizard archetypes level up and when they're granted abilities. Now, you know, I'm actually half tempted, tempted to say because here's the thing. Some classes and even like traditions, archetypes are front loaded and mm -hmm. some of them are back loaded right yes. i'm almost willing to say because the wizard has to defer so long for mm. the, like the kind of meager clerically abilities that they get i can almost make peace with the fact that they get a 17th level ability now to come up with the sort of the, the world logic as to why that is i don't know maybe the the it's like in Faerun they have the weave, right? Uh -huh. And maybe it's that because you're crossing the threads of divine magic and arcane that like you unlock some secrets that even a cleric is hidden to him, but you almost like pry it open <laughs> as a wizard. Because like, wizards are more sort of like independent, uh, independent uh, sort of yeah. character right. um, versus a cleric who relies on the, the, um, the knowledge descended from the gods. So maybe it's just like you just pierce a bit veil of knowledge. And I guess that's my my story reason as to why it might work. <laughs> that's, and, my, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, yeah right, and I'm sticking to it for sure. Uh, well, I mean, that, that, that kind of works. And if I'm forced to digest something, I guess that could be it. I, I don't know, being a... a a cleric is one of my favorite classes, so to see wizard, who is generally one of the highest, you know, power classes, and in, in my opinion, to then be like, okay, well, I'm going to get a leg up on the cleric here. I'm like, yeah. And clerics in this edition do suffer from the, you know what, we're just going to shove, uh, you know, a crappy power for them every, every, for everyone at eighth level, which I just, I, I really don't yeah. like it. I, I wish they actually put a little bit more time and effort into coming up with something that made more sense in for... Individualizing the domains. Yeah. 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 That would have... It's just like more personalized abilities, sort of like how, you know, like the Warlock gets them infrequently, but there's lots of cool thematic things that they get. So if if each wizard or cleric um, domain had more individualized powers, and, you know, we maybe we... Maybe that's a Patreon thing of like we've re, we uh, retweaked those. Re, re, reskin the domains? Yeah. Figure okay. out like, yeah, some of those are kind of crappy let's 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 actually figure out what makes more sense right, so now some, of, some of this has probably already been talked about so let, let's go on to the actual new thing and that's the the war magic war magic what is it good for <laughs> absolutely everything no i'm just kidding it's no lore master guys no no lore master but it's actually pretty good and it's balanced it's good and balanced and they've also skimmed a lot of the concepts that they were exploring with the lore master but they reined it in to be palatable right uh, so so, so. For, first, we have Arcane Deflection, which essentially, uh, so you can either get a plus two to a constitution saving throw uh, as a reaction, or you can get a plus four to your armor class. So it kind of, instead of having to burn the first level spell slot for shield, you can just throw up a, a ward that'll, that'll be between you and harm's way. And the way they describe the, this this build is actually, it's the midpoint between Abjuration Magic and Evocation. 
But the great part is it doesn't actually require any spell slot expenditures to do this, which I actually think was really great. The only thing it does is, well, the round after you do this, you can only cast a cantrip. You yeah. can't actually expend a spell slot. So I'm like, you know what? I actually really like that. That's a, a completely new mechanic that they've never really used before. Well, obviously it was new, um, but I, I dig it. Well, it, it fits with the logic of either you have something or you don't, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like anything where you're trying to count or any, that that doesn't really hold up. Like it's either you have access to a capability or you don't. And so to that extent, it works. Uh, and then we have tactical wit also at second level that you get your intelligence modifier as an initiative bonus, which I think this was also a part of the the, uh, the lore keeper. The lore master. The lore master. Okay. So I think they had access to that. Uh it makes a lot of sense. You know, if you're going to be a battle caster, you're getting into the thick of it. You're you're a wizard. So you're going to have that nice intelligence modifier, and having that having the ability to go even faster. Well, I mean, sense. being able to drop a large area of effect spell before your party members get into the mix of things and fuck up your <laughs> entire battle plan, it, it's a it's a fantastic advantage for a wizard. Any kind of arcane caster getting to go early is is massive to get those those great clusters of uh, villains sort of in and, one radius. And let's face it, by being a by being a war magic user. You're not an evoker, so therefore there is no select spell. Singling out your friends, yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, oh, no, all right, that, that spot right there, I'm going to swirl my magic around him and not burn him to death. Nope. Yeah, no, we, we get... <laughs> I'm going to burn everybody. We totally get hit points as a resource a la Scott Garibay. <laughs> right. So then Power Surge. Um, so this is, the, this is the one that, you know, we, we really uh, liked as a, as a bonus on the Lore Master. Um, Right. This is the one we can... Yeah. So the, it gives you an extra two dice, a damage dice of whatever your spell does. But I believe it has to be an area of effect spell. It has to affect one more than one target. I, I think so, is the verbiage. Like, all right, you know, great. You're know, throwing that fireball around because you're sixth level. So, all right. Well, normally it would be doing eight die six. Well, now it's going to be ten. No, no extra spell slots necessary. You just boom. You yeah. burn them. You burn them that much better. Yeah, because the lore master it was constrained to two an extra two d six of force damage, and this uh, also has the constraint of um, shorter long rest. I actually like the additional damage dice being tied to whatever the spell is, less to keep track of because if your spell does d ten damage and like well you have to mark out which dice are going to force damage. I'll roll these two over here and I'll roll these ones here. Yeah, exactly. So that's a whole thing. This just makes a lot more sense to me. But I would even say like I don't because you can only use this every shorter long rest. I don't even mind the fact if somebody were to use this on an ability that only targets one mm -hmm. one target. An extra two two damage dice to someone, what's that going to even do? Right. It's not really that much. So, Indeed. Uh, so then we move on to 10th level to Durable Magic. And th this one is just fantastic. Typically, if you're going into battle, you're going to be concentrating on on a buffing effect of some sort, be it, you know, so, something that improves your AC, something that, you know, makes multiple of you or whatever have you, here you get a plus two bonus to AC and all saving throws. You are surrounded by a cushion of magic that is in between you and the spell that you're concentrating on. Absolutely love it. Yeah, that that's just a fantastic ability to, to and how passive it is because it's just like a kicker for something else else awesome that's going on for yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. I cast a spell, and because I cast a spell, I get extra goodies. Yeah, like a, to a, a, a stone skin going on in the background or something like that. You're, you're golden. Uh, and then we also have deflecting shroud. Now I like I like class abilities that kind of build on. Uh, other things that you've had later on down the line, like it's it stacks a little bit up yeah. with things, and so deflecting sh shroud. What it does is it makes uh, the, the earlier ability of arcane deflection that much better, uh, because each creature of your choice takes um, within ten feet of you is going to take force damage equal to half your level. So uh, let's see, and that's so anytime you you trigger that ability. Which it's it's a passive ability that passive ability yeah. you use it as a reaction, and right and you're not and you, so it's only burning your reaction. Um, you're not limited to the amount of times you use it. It's just it's going to mess up your ability to cast something. Um, so yeah, I just think it's a really cool doubling down of capability you already had. 
So it doesn't expend a resource, and when you do it, you're hurting hurting those around you that you want. Yeah, yeah. The nice to, to deselect friendlies is is kind of a, a nice because you can't do that with your evocation magic. So <laughs> they give you a little, they give you they give you a bone here. Right. So there you go. Two short and sweet archetypes. Um, you know, let us know what you guys think down down below. Which one do you think is better? Do you agree? Do you disagree? However, it's a great spot to talk about that. And that's in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can make a pact with us on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.